Yo, what's up, uh, everybody? Okay, killed my recording of this, uh, and then there was static the entire time. What's up, everybody? Yeah, I think I fixed it now, though, so we should be good. I'll pretend like I'm saying everything for the first time. <coughs> uh, the Hockey X video. It'll probably be a week old by the time this goes up. I don't know why it's called Hockey X. I'm not really sure what the deal with that is. I mean, it was Hockey 1, 2, and 3, right? And now we're at Hockey 10. There's a lot of number skipping that happens because certain numbers are deemed, like, less sexy than other ones. You know, I think everybody avoids the number 9. Like, I don't think there's, there was no Windows 9 and there's no iPhone 9 either. And I think that's like human psychology. You, if, if you buy the number 9, then it's like, well, I might as well wait for the number 10. But then when it comes to hockey videos, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, I don't know. Maybe this is going to be the last hockey video or something. Um, so they just decided to finish it with uh, 10. Anyway, this is a uh, hockey... Uh, video by George Pukas. Uh, I don't really know what that's supposed to mean, but that's Benny Magliano. He has a uh, number of pseudonyms for some reason. I don't, he doesn't like to put his name on stuff. He seems like a little bit of a weird guy, a man of mystery. A video like this, there's so much internet sleuthing, searching old movies for like image sources. The look of hockey, which is uh, Benny Magliano's aesthetic pretty much, is like very... 70s, 80s, 90s, like sort of VHS-y type of like goosebumps, disposable photos, those sorts of things. He likes all of that. I wouldn't call it like a, a filter necessarily, but the way that he treats the video files has a really uh, like specific look in skateboarding to it now. And I think he draws a lot of inspiration um, from the older movies. He wants it to look kind of old, but he doesn't overdo it. You can tell like this is the product of... It, like years of, of tinkering and like just perfecting. I think this video looks very, very good. I think he also does a really good job on the the sound design as well. All the transitions and stuff, like there's a, it's very immersive uh, and ambient, the entire thing. And all of this is coming from somebody who doesn't really, just from the graphics and stuff, I'm not the biggest fan, it comes across as like kind of, kind of a little too serious for my taste. However, I think that, in the video format, I really appreciate how seriously Benny Magliano, or Mr. Magliano, Benny Magliano, I don't know which I should say. Magliano sounds like, uh, if I don't pay him the proper uh, respect, I'm gonna get whacked. Okay, so, yeah, this is a 20-minute video. There's title cards in this video, too, and I think they're done very well. There's a lot of talk in skateboarding about whether you should have title cards or not. Most of the people, I think, are, are in favor of them. And I would imagine that a lot of people that make videos sort of view them as this annoying thing that you have to deal with. But uh, in this video, they're incorporated um, really creatively. They become part of the character uh, and theme of the video. They give you like a little teaser of each skateboarder's like personality or at least their role in, in this video. Other video makers, if they want to try to get creative as well, could probably challenge themselves um, to use the title card as, as something to excel your video instead of seeing it as something that is kind of an annoyance. So the first skater in the lineup is uh, John Fitzgerald. He's a large, he's a large man. He's a big guy. Even though this video is serious, there's still like a very good sense of humor um, to the video, like this sideways cropping with the feet flying in the air. And even though it's got a good sense of humor, like you see with this title card right after, it's like very angsty and, and try hard, which is a difficult balancing act that I think most of the time is is accomplished really really well yeah basically john fitzgerald i see him as like a you know working class skateboarder he's not uh the most talented nor physically gifted in fact i think that you reach a certain point in like height and pounds where you just are physically a little too large to be uh an expert like technical level skateboard rider um, and I think that's definitely true of, of John Fitzgerald. However, it also gives his skateboarding um, a lot of character. You can see he, like, fucking eats shit if, if he misses, which is, I guess, one of the entertaining parts about watching uh, bigger skaters. I like this uh, Wally, Wally to uh, nose grind, uh, grab out, nose pick grind, I guess you could say, if you wanted to. 
everybody's ollied over this thing already. I don't know what the deal is with this. Like, I guess people just don't give a shit anymore about, like, ABDs. But I think Heckride posted something, and there's, like, like five people that have already done this. So I don't really know what the rules are anymore. It seems like people just really don't give much of a fuck. Um, this clip's interesting. It's a really good clip. Um, backboard and then drops down off this, like, unsecured railing into this bank. I can't tell if either this was like first try or they kept putting this pole back on because you can see this pole that's sitting right here it flies off so i don't know if they kept like putting that back for dramatic effect but he's like pretty sweaty so or maybe it just happened to break that time i don't know but uh the clip is pretty sick another thing i like about John Fitzgerald is the fact that he every clip pretty much he's like sweating his ass off which is like I identify with that um, personally I work really hard for my tricks as well though I do think some of it is self-imposed due to the fact that he's skating in LA wearing a long sleeve in almost every single clip um, this one was kind of a, a disaster you can see <laughs> you can see how fucking dirty his uh, his shirt is and that's because he's wearing a a white long sleeve sweats through it obviously does this long 50 50 and then right where he's landing there's like a huge pile of dirt so he probably fell in that um like five or six times and then all that shirt was just like magnetically stuck to him um I, if i were in charge of hockey and i know uh, this kind of like goes against their brand identity but i would create a uh hockey signature dry fit john fitzgerald long sleeve so that he can sweat as much as he wants and if he if he wants to roll around in the dirt it's not gonna stick to his back like glue i think if john fitzgerald wasn't a pro skateboarder he'd be like one of those construction dudes with like the most basic job possible sipping a big gulp being the the construction guy that sits in the machine that literally just like breaks concrete into smaller pieces maybe that's disrespectful i don't i don't know him at all he he did quite a few of these in this part and i think it's because there was like a drum something like this is from a movie uh, what is it called? It's from 1978. I did research, guys. I looked stuff up. Let's see. Where the fuck is it? I wrote it down. Uh, oh, it's from the movie The Deer Hunter, which I think was about the Vietnam War. Um, and it says, Welcome Home, John. So, And we're watching John Fitzgerald's part. Um, so kind of a cool thing to like pop in there. It's a nice touch. I also noticed that he tends to use uh, images that will be a similar shape or a similar spot in the frame that um, is like the end of the clip that he's trying to transition from. He knows when to amplify certain sounds and also knows when to subtract sounds. Like I think in Joseph Campo's Ender, it's completely muted and it's like a very cool effect. Definitely watch this if you haven't already. Watching it with no sound is like not nearly as cool um, as watching it with the sound, obviously. The music in this is, uh, it's called like Napalm Death or something. If you've ever played the uh, the video game Doom, it kind of reminds me of, of that a little bit. Satanic, but kind of in a lit way. Um. <laughs> All right, so here's the ender, which is like a ollie over a big gap and then ends up uh, in the swamp and this is the image that they used to market this video initially and when i saw this screen cap i had assumed that this was another source image that was pulled from one of the old movies that benny magliano likes to replicate the fact that i thought that and it's actually something that they filmed just goes to show you like how good he's gotten at recreating that very same aesthetic that I, it could be mistaken um, for actual source imagery. And this feels like exactly the type of thing that you would you would see in like an old action movie is like some guy flying through a swamp a nice ender but as well from like a, a cinematic or a video production standpoint um was also a, a, a like a an excellent way to to end the part um yeah i enjoyed john fitzgerald's part he's like i said working class skater sweats his ass off for for every clip 
um, and didn't flip his board once. So, I mean, that gives you a, an insight into the type of skater that he is. If you can pit, put together um, an entire video part without flipping your board, I think that's pretty sick. You can see part of what I think he he treats his videos with is like this ghosting effect. You can see it here in, in slow motion. It's exaggerated, but I think he puts that throughout a little bit like some kind of motion blur throughout the whole video because if you pause and you go frame by frame, things can like blend together a little bit. Um, see, this is this is like kind of where it gets like a little too like hockey vibes for, for my taste or FA vibes for my taste, like the uh, all the Jesus imagery and stuff. It's just like a little too... A little too serious um, for me personally, but overall, I, I really like the art direction of the video. I tried Googling this image. I couldn't even find what it was from, and this is like another um, example of taking a title card and using it to add build character for your video. Um, this is for Andrew Allen's part, old footage of, of a cowboy uh, dancing is maybe from YouTube or something, but adding the neon border and then putting uh, Andrew's name in the, the green text it's really nice. It sets a tone for, for the music and the style, which is, I guess, Andrew Allen loosely resembles some sort of uh, cowboy, or maybe he's into cowboy paraphernalia. Um, but the music is definitely sort of country-like. Really, really excellent work on, on the title cards. This part is like, eh, it's, it's okay. There's something else that's kind of cool about this transition is there's like an echoing effect. I'm not sure if that's in the recording of the song, um, but it sort of sounds like when you listen to music in an empty mall. Gives you like kind of an anxious feeling like the space that you're in is really, really large. Um, and that plays in nicely with, with the video's theme. You know, something about hockey is like, it's supposed to be weird. You know, it's supposed to feel kind of creepy. Things are feeling like they're just kind of outside your reach. So... This is like a pretty okay part from Andrew. It's important to remember that he did just come off of that Vans video eight months ago, which was like four or five minutes long. So you can't really expect him to have like a bunch of crazy footage when he just came out with like a full proper part. Most of the video is, is stuff like this, like skating driveways um, and doing flip tricks. So um, I think it's kind of funny, like John Fitzgerald, then Andrew Allen, like back to back really sets the tone for for what you can expect from a hockey video, which is like their team's aesthetic. Like is, <laughs> I've been watching those, the Sopranos and uh, I just can't help but like look at Andrew Allen and be reminded of when Tony Soprano comes out into the kitchen and is in his bathrobe every fucking episode, washed up dad. Uh, he looks like he enjoys uh, himself a good bush light. This is the, the blending thing that I'm talking about. You can see that on any like particular frame, nothing is ever like, really that sharp and I know they're not using like 4k cameras here but I think there is some added motion blur this is a pretty cool wally this is another spot where um you can see like some of the now I would guess you could call them like extinct filmmaking techniques uh from older movies I really like how he uses this this kind of stuff this video just has a lot of character so many people in skateboarding make the same exact fucking thing. Afraid to experiment or do anything different. It feels like most of the experimentation that happens these days is like making skateboard videos ironically, shit posting your way through through a skateboarding video, like choosing joke songs. I appreciate that there is somebody out there that is willing to experiment, try different shit, and make a serious try hard skateboarding video. So many videos either Either they're like not taking themselves seriously and they're using silly music or they're taking themselves seriously but not doing anything creative not taking any creative risks like literally copy and pasting like the top 10 rap caviar playlist I think there is a serious lack of creativity and original vision within skateboarding videos at the moment or I don't know if it's always been like that um, but I certainly feel that way currently and I'm very appreciative of a video like this even though I don't think that overall this video has the best skateboarding or anything, I think that the video itself is very, very good. That's the end of Ben K's part. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny to have two of your skaters, Ben Cato 
and Kevin Rodriguez both only have one clip in this video, but they both get their own title cards and they both get put in the credits. I think it's a good prank. Um, obviously, it kind of sucks that you don't get Ben Cato footage. Again, he just had a, a proper part that came out last year. Um, so again, I'm also not like expecting Ben Cato to have a Mark Suchu attitude um, about skateboarding. He seems like sort of a weird guy. I don't expect him to be pumping out uh, a one video part every single year. We also don't know much about like these dudes, um, like whether whether they're injured or anything like that. You know, with professional sport, you go on ESPN and they've got injury updates. Maybe they should start doing that on Thrasher is just have like the little thing at the bottom who reports who's injured and out for, for how long. Um, I think that would be kind of useful for, for skateboarding. It would be interesting to see all the different excuses they come up with for, for Kevin Bradley's absence. Kevin Bradley out with <laughs> sprained pinky toe. Nine months. One trick in the video and we don't even know if he landed him. What do you think? How'd I come out? What do you think? Do you want to do it over? Should we do it over or not? What do you think? Yeah, we should do it over. What do you think? <laughs> okay. I think this is so funny. Such a dark and, and creepy energy throughout the video, but then still be able to break it up with some very intelligent comedy. I was just staring at this cat being like, oh man, that's that's such a cool shot. Yeah, we should do it over. What do you think? Okay, Joseph Campos. Joseph, I don't know what I saw him in. I saw him in some like scrody scrandom supreme video or something and i remember looking at him being like i don't like this kid um and the reason i didn't like him is because he reminded me of this kid that i went to high school with named <laughs> um this fucking kid I, I i barely even talked to him there's just a certain smug look about his face that i knew his his you could just tell by looking at him that his, his parents had a ton of money and he did his hair in a, in a certain way. It just fucking made me mad. Before this even started, I was like down to root against this guy. Uh, but I have to say, after watching this, like there's no fucking denying how sick this kid is, even if he does resemble a kid from high school that I didn't like very much. He goes ape shit in, in this video part. Um, and his skating is like very well in tune with the current state of like trendy LA skating which is like a lot of ride on grinds, dropping in on banks and shit, and sort of skating some of the older infrastructure of Los Angeles, like this rail, for example, that he's about to hit. I mean, this looks like it was installed at the same time that they built the 101 freeway, which is like this, this freeway that's just so fucking sketchy. It's got stop signs as on ramps. Um, <laughs> I think they made it back when everybody was using motor cars cars were such a new concept that motor wasn't considered redundant so they just had like cars going <laughs> driving around that thing yeah this handrail looks like uh, it's from that same time period and that front angle that first angle definitely doesn't do it justice you can see on the second angle how fucked this thing actually is the kink is like just head height what is this a handrail for giants Backboarding this thing is pretty fucking nutso. Uh, this is, I really like this line, pop, shove, and then back lip, uh, shove out, steez, bolts. You wouldn't guess that this kid would have such a developed kind of taste. The chinos and the blazers, I think, would, would fool a lot of people, but um, he definitely knows what the fuck he's doing, no question about that. I like this heel flip a lot as well. Um, because you'd look at this and your first instinct would be probably to like jump into a kickflip on it, but instead he heel flips front side, even though he's facing backside, um, he heel flips. So his board is flipping the opposite way instead of into the bank. It's just the reverse of what I would expect somebody to do. And like, it's pretty big lands pretty far into the bank. Um, and it looks super steep cause he's going very fast by the end of it. This drop in, um, drop in grind pretty fucking sick and there's there's another really good musical transition which kicks off i think the guitar just goes as he skates through the uh the puddle this trick is beast as fuck um wally 270 into the bank with the water beating off of his board beautiful i mean and the light is catching it you remember when girls used to like dunk their heads in the pool maybe i don't know maybe this was just where i live but girls were really into like dunking their head in the pool and then taking a photo as they'd whip it upwards and like pool water rainbow 
um, above their heads. It was like that, but like the coolest possible version of that. Nice 5 0. My girlfriend's mad at me. Sorry, baby. What is this again? Oh, yeah, the back 50. <laughs> Sauced out, shifty Ollie. Fucked rolling. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, front boardy. Okay, this is in Texas. Yeah, you can see right here. One of my sources on Instagram said that they took a two-week trip to, to Texas in the middle of the, the winter. And this landscape, you'll see it in Nick Stain's part as well, but this, like, bluish sky with the dead trees. Like, this works so fucking well with uh, Benny Magliano's, like, uh, editing style or, or his filter. Let's just call it his filter. Of course, a fucking Kia Soul would park in front of the skate spot. <laughs> the entire parking lot probably and they have to park i guess that makes it cooler in the end typical kia soul driver dude they're clueless okay this is so fucking stupidly nuts dropping in on a railing on somebody's porch and then falling off a roof <laughs> <laughs> it is so fucking sick. I love this kind of trick. You look at the spot and you're like, wouldn't it be sick? I The people that actually do it, I just think that's the fucking best. Massive props for actually walking up these fucking stairs over here and then climbing onto somebody's porch and dropping in off their on their railing off the roof. I mean, I think that's so fucking cool. It was gnarly as... F I thought that was the ender, but then this is the actual ender. This is a certified hood classic. Excellent part. When I watched that the first time, I was like, oh my fucking God. Like, this is not what I was expecting from this guy at all. But he's a certified beast legend in my book. This is a part that I would have put in my top 10 for Sodi, um, or had I not ar already recorded that like a couple weeks ago. Okay. Let me turn on my light. Things are getting kind of fucked up over here. So you guys are not going to be happy with me. Um, at least some of you aren't, I don't think. Actually, it'll be interesting to see what people think. But um, I, in my mind, I had like a perfect visual representation of what I'm going to look like to people that are going that are going to disagree with my opinion or my feelings about this. I'm just going to say it. I'm about to say it. Say it. Say it. I don't care that you broke your elbow. I don't care about Donovan Piscopo skateboarding. I understand the appeal. I understand he's a perfect fit on hockey. He also looks like a dad um, that has peaked and enjoys bush lights. Like, he perfectly fits the, the hockey aesthetic. I've just never found him to be particularly compelling. I'm sorry. I know I'm not allowed to say that. He's the kind of guy that you're just not allowed to say anything negative about because he's like just a fucking a street skater who I think is is doing the right kind of shit. It's just never appealed to me. There's something not quite right about the greaser outfits and then wearing like Nike SB print sock. It's just wrong. Most of these images that he put in between the clips, I don't really understand exactly what they're supposed to mean. This one, I believe, has a very pointed and specific meaning behind it, which is high top dunks with a greaser fit. I'm sorry. <laughs> You can't fucking do it. I haven't called anything illegal in a long time. I do my best to articulate why I don't like things. And I think that saying that something illegal is just like sort of a easy way to brush something aside without uh, explaining why you don't like it. But this shit is just illegal. I think we can all agree that fucking high top blue dunks with a greaser outfit is wrong. It's just not natural. <sighs> All right, this ender is pretty cool, though. Pole jam, backside wall ride. Got to give credit where credit's due. That was pretty fucked. Pigeons are sort of like a played out trope in skateboarding at this point, but this was a really, really sick transition in my opinion. All right, now Caleb's part. I think I've been pretty positive about this video so far because I like the video a lot, but these are like back-to-back -back two parts that I don't really care about too much. Um... <laughs> This part really didn't do it for me. I am so fucking sick of seeing people skating expensive Supreme clothing in Milan or wherever the fuck. Why does it feel like there have been 10 videos in the past like 18 months with the same exact formula? I'm just like, I'm so exhausted 
with seeing it. And to make matters worse, like this isn't even a fucking cool trick. In my opinion, if you're going to do manuals, like do it at a sick spot. You know, why are you as a professional skateboarder doing a switch heel flip nose manual on a curb at like one of those Euro plazas that looks like the city approved it for skateboarding? Like this doesn't fucking even count in my opinion. I know this is going to sound like I'm being more harsh on, on Caleb. It's just the Supreme bias that I have. Like I'm so tired of Supreme gear X Europe. Um, get me out of this nightmare, please. Fucking North Face Supreme collab tray flip stair sets. Get me out of here! It's so obnoxious. Um, the end, the his heel flip he does at the end though is pretty fucking sick. The heel flip. This is massive. Um, that was a pretty damn cool clip. Gets so high over this thing. I just love heel flips. I think it may have something to do with the fact that I personally can't heel flip, but I just like, I love a good heel flip. I think that they're just like most of the time a lot cooler than kick flips. He rode away from that super swag too. Caleb's been putting out footage, I feel like pretty consistently. So I don't really blame him for having like sort of a phoned in throwaway part. Um, it's not even a part really. I'd call it more like a, a section um, as if, as if those two things are, are different at all. But I think a lot of the pros in here did not put their best foot forward. The same thing goes for Nick Stain's part and Andrew Allen's part, which is very justifiable, I think. Okay, then Kevin Rodriguez. Cool. Nose slide to nose grind. Nick Stain is one of those skaters that, like, people are really, really big fans of. I'd say he has, like, kind of a cult following. People who just have, like, an appreciation for his style, which is basically, like, looking like he's too big to ride a skateboard. Like, he kind of has the silhouette of, like, a, a football player, you know, with, like, the really broad shoulders. He skates fast, and it looks like if he falls, he's going to hit the ground hard. So it's pretty exciting, you know, to watch him because he's so he appears to be so top-heavy. But this, this part... Ugh. I And I'm a massive fan of, of Nick Stain. Like, I'm one of the people that is really into his skating. This part just isn't all that sick, I don't think. I do think it is like a lot of filler stuff slash footage that didn't care about or try very hard on. Um, you look at a line like this, the first line, fakey ollie, um, switch flip, and then fakey tray, I think, and then switch front pop. So it's like, yeah, cool. It's Nick Stain skateboarding. I think that they're like kind of getting away with that a little bit. They're like, guys, look, it's Nick Stain. I was like, how many tries did that line take him though? I mean, that was essentially just a flat ground line. And yeah, he didn't push in it, but like how interesting is a flat ground line, even if it is Nick Stain? There's a couple things like that. I mean, half of this video part pretty much takes place in those like really nice uh, plazas. I'm not, I'm not convinced that this that Nick Stain went to this spot and he was like, yeah, that's the only thing I plan on doing here. Like these all feel like the tricks before the actual trick, if you know what I'm saying, the warm up trick. Um, this back tail is pretty nice. I like how he goes to fakie, looks cool. Okay, back 180, half cab flip. This is another one where I'm like, wasn't this, Is this is the warm up line, right? Back 180, half cab, nose grind. Is that it? Come on, baby. You got a name to protect here. This is Hockey X. Um, it is kind of co a confusing concept to like use throwaway for like a hockey hockey video. You know, like the hockey, isn't the hockey, like it's a hockey video. It should be kind of important, right? But a lot of the pros just scraping whatever's left over on the, on the floor, I presume. Um, and maybe they just don't care. Maybe these guys just don't really give a shit. Maybe they're slightly over hockey or something. I feel like that's kind of a stretch to say, but it seems like if they do have good footage, they are, they want to use it for something else. So I don't really understand what's going on here. I'm just like 100% speculating, but I do know that this is not like Nick Stain is, is a better skateboarder than a video like this would, would lead you to believe. Okay, you want to see him fall pretty hard? Oh! <laughs> YouTube's been weird lately. I don't know what they're up to, but this video's age restricted. They've just been age restricting and, and demonetizing videos left and right. And I think that sucks that they age restrict this. And I don't even think, like, for what purpose? There's nothing in here that is, like, 
age restriction worthy in in my opinion unless uh minus that donovan piscopo dunk fit that's the only thing that i think uh children shouldn't be seeing what the fuck is the point they age restrict this video so while it's popping in the algorithm half the people that want to watch it can't click on it and then they'll probably get it reviewed and then youtube will be like oh there's nothing wrong with it and then the algorithm will have, will have kicked it out of circulation already so this is coming from a YouTuber, so I have my own specific annoyances, but, like, it's fucked. They work, you know, they obviously, well, not maybe not all the skaters, but um, they worked pretty hard on, on creating this video, and, like, the fact that a lot of people can't watch it, I just, I just find that totally asinine. Come on, YouTube fuckers. It's also on HockeyHomeVideo.com as well, so if you are a Grom without uh, an 18-plus YouTube account, you can watch it there. It's probably in better quality there, too. Okay, this is what I'm talking about when they went to went to Texas. Look at that beautiful landscape with these like rickety ass uh, electrical wires and the dead forest over here. I mean, doesn't your mind like wander over there? What could be hiding in those trees? Is it a is it a monster? Is it Jason Dill with a blade because he saw your FA video? Is it Donovan Piscopo with the dunks on and, and the tucked in tank top? What 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 horrors could possibly be lying beyond this tree line? Who knows? Scary though. Um <laughs> Okay, here, oh man. Like this one, you're serious, man? I wouldn't have used this. You're gonna, you're pro, dude. You're using this? Ollie up back big spin. I don't, I don't get it. This clip is really sick though. I like this 50-50 uh, grind. Like the Ollie off too, that was pretty sick. And then I think he does like four or five tricks on this bank to end it. Half cabin, hill bomb. Nick Stain going fast. Nolly 180, switch, hill bomb. Then what is it? Front pop? Yeah, front pop in, hill bomb. Ollie's on the side. I don't really understand all the different routes and paths that are possible with this particular spot, but depending on how difficult your entry trick is, it seems like you can choose uh, different uh, different paths. And then switch front pop to end it. And yeah, I, I think that th this location um, in Texas, like it matches the aesthetic of the video really, really nicely. It looks, ex it looks great with the um, with the filter on it. Okay, um, and that's it for Nick Stain. Ugh. Come on, man. Okay, final part now is Diego Todd, aka Harley Davidson Iron Wing, the brains of the operation. Self-described brains of the operation. Harley Davidson Iron Wing. Can't play the song, and that might actually be a good thing. This song is like totally stuck in my head, and I can't tell whether or not I really like it or I fucking despise it. But either way, uh, I know the way we're cruising. I feel like people, like a lot of people, are gonna super hate that song. Yeah. So this list was a big surprise. I think um, how good this Diego part was because i'd seen i'd seen him in a couple like montage videos and he's got good style i i like him but i definitely was not um expecting anything on on this level i mean there's some really fucking good skateboarding in in this part he, he skates some like rinky dink random ass spots bob burnquist second mega ramp like five percent constructed like i have no idea what this thing is supposed to be hits this kicker ramp being held up by stones into a, a kinked hubba. Ollie into bank where he has to like shimmy past the wall. Dodges the first wall. Definitely does not dodge the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Bounces off that thing. I, I Part of what I like about Diego is that he's like, he's not afraid to eat shit. He hurls himself down um, some stuff in this video. He abides by the, the, I think, very sensible handrail skating rule, unless you're like a god of skating handrails. Don't skate any handrails unless there's something... Oh, god damn it. I fucking hate living in a driveway, dude. And my neighbors have this car that like... It sounds like a bell every time it backs up. It goes boom, boom. This is the Kia Nero 2020. There is a very loud, obnoxious reverse sound in this car. And there we go. Very, very loud. So fucking annoying. But anyway, um, he does the, the handrail rule, which is that don't skate any regular handrails. Only skate weird handrails that have, like, strange extenuating circumstances, you know? Um, like this one. 
has a weird knob in the middle of it and and you have to go off of a curb to do it because unless you're gonna like tray flip front crook a handrail like there's no point in just skating a regular one at this point you're like competing with a specific discipline um that there are freaks like brayden hoban out there or hoban whatever you call him who are just like pushing it to a ridiculous level so best to avoid them unless they're weird this spot's pretty cool ollie off electrical into the into the bank drop gets ultra smoked <laughs> this this would have been so sick if he did it but also i think equally sick to have uh, a good bail section in in your part that was a proper bail into caveman wall ride <laughs> 50 50 grind okay no slide flip out to reggie's this seems kind of random but i guess it's cool because he goes over the little grate in the ground there's a little new york section i don't really i don't like this clip that much i am just like completely burned out on seeing people skate bumpies sidewalk bumpies from like that being 90 percent of the other stuff in this video i'm gonna say something that some of you guys aren't gonna like, but the problem that I used to have with LA skating was that everybody was just hitting the same spots over and over and over again. So it was like getting kind of stale. I think New York is having that problem a little bit. Don't crucify me in the comments, but I think that the LA scene has been a lot more like creative in, in scouting for new spots and, and skating different shit. Whereas I think people in New York are still like, yeah, we go out and we hit the same spots everybody else is hitting, but it's New York, baby. So uh, everything is still sick. This is really sick though. The manual ollie down the stairs powers through this manly and then wall ride back 50. Nose slide, varial flip out. Pretty cool one to do since everything else like ever has already been done on this thing. So... Props for, I think, figuring out a trick that nobody else has done. Don't quote me on that, but I, I haven't seen this. Okay, Nolly flip. I think that's about as norm core as he gets um, throughout this video. This screenshot's sick, though. This dude with the Nipsey Hustle shirt. Yeah, Cam, this guy is so fucking sick. The face he makes. <laughs> oh, this guy, P-Dub, has such a banging clip. Look at how the board just floats in the air and he catches it. Boom! We all have that one random homie that cavemans off uh, storage containers. Um. <laughs> oh, I love this trick. Back 50 and then rides. And also back 50 is the corner of it. This is such a sick clip. All right. And there's this backside board slide down like the triple kink. I love that zoom that he does. It's so funny. That's like a, I think, I, I'm not like a film expert or anything, but like, I think they used to do that in Western movies or some shit when people would like turn around and it'd zoom on them. Heckride posted the, this different angle of this spot. And this pole is like actually just directly in front of the landing. So, I mean, it's pretty fucking crazy that he was able to dodge this thing. Like, look how close his knee is to hitting it. Nice. Oh my god, that trick was so fucking cool. Wally uh, front three shove or something. I mean, lands like perfect bolts. West Park, that's at Park and Ventura. This is like kind of a similar street obstacle to that main quarter pipe thing that they have. So I think it's uh, it's cool that he that he did hit this spot in the the t-shirt. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, or whether I'm being like a internet noob by saying something like that. But I thought it was cool. And then this also was sick. What do you even call this? I guess like foot plant cancel flip. Um, it's such a weird spot. And I'm glad that he like makes the most of it with these like unhinged psycho tricks. Okay, right on crook into the bank. And then I think we're almost done. Yeah. Okay. 50-50 and then hits this thing and then drops into the bank. And he has to like dodge the hole. Yeah, pretty fucking cool. Great ender to a really splendid part, I thought. I'd say that like half of the skating in this video was like people actually trying and the other half was um, pros who really didn't feel like um, using their best footage. The people that did try, I really enjoyed their parts. John Fist Fitzgerald, Joseph Campos, and Diego Todd. Very, very sick parts. Surprisingly high level part from, from Diego. Like this is sick. So much so that like it makes me wonder about why why he didn't turn pro after this. Um, I mean, people turn pro 
for much lesser reasons than having the final part in a in a hockey video these days. I'm a little confused about that. It makes me like wonder about the trajectory of of where things are going exactly. If they're not turning him pro, uh, maybe their roster they feel like is a little too big. But they just got a Tyshawn and and Nikel Smith off payroll, so seems like there's a there's an open spot. I would expect him to like turn pro at the end of this year. I don't I don't know what's what the deal is, but I mean he certainly deserves to be a professional skateboarder in my opinion by today's standards after a part like that. Especially uh against given the context of some of his uh his friends in this in this video. I think Diego looked uh, very very good. I have like a a weird opinion about this video which is that I think it was maybe slightly more about showing Benny Magliano's vision than it was about uh, showcasing everybody's best skateboarding. So I think that that was maybe why they were comfortable using some throwaway clips. I think he just needed skateboarding um, to, to do that. That's my opinion. Otherwise, you guys can explain to me why Nick Stain is doing ollie up the curb, big spin off the curb uh, lines. I think the actual video itself was probably better overall than the skateboarding in the video. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. Um, the sound is extremely immersive. Uh, again, like I said earlier, appreciate the fact that somebody in the skateboarding industry is still like sticking their neck out, making something creative and taking and, and making something serious while taking creative risks. I really, really respect that. Yeah, I mean, I think that'll wrap it. If you guys wanted me to give this a score out of 10, um, I'd probably give the video like uh seven. Before buying a Walmart board, I like to test them out. Unfortunately, sometimes this happens. My favorite part are the conversations that happen when trying to check out. I, I, 